Investigative series of the Tampa Bay Times is reporting that a handful of large real estate investment companies have been buying up thousands of single family homes in the Bay Area and turning them into rentals. Experts tell the Times the trend makes it harder for individuals to break into Tampa Bay's already high cost housing market by driving up prices and driving down supply. Locals who rent from one of the private companies told the Times that the large property owner had failed to fix broken toilets, remove mold, or repair air conditioners in a timely manner, subjecting the tenants to unsanitary conditions harmful to their health. Democrats have introduced legislation in both houses of Congress that would ban hedge funds from owning single-family homes. If that legislation passes, the companies would be required to sell all their homes within 10 years. Industry groups like the National Rental Home Council have opposed the bill, saying it would reduce reduce the availability of rental housing and discourage new construction. So Jennifer, 27,000 homes in the Pasco, Pinellas and Hillsborough County areas have been bought up by these private equity firms and that I saw one study that said but that by the year 2030, 40% of US single family rental homes will be owned by these private equity companies. With absolutely no transparency. So we can't see into what they're doing, we can't see into their books, we can't see into how they maneuver and they're also they're also artificially inflating property values. They're making it impossible pretty much for people to get into home buying. And they have a monopoly in essence. So um, it's, it's definitely taken over as a St. Pete native and watching what has changed in Pinellas County um, and seeing people I know, young couples, very young in their mid twenties, early thirties, being excited that they got their starter home for $425,000. Um, that's heartbreaking to me and it's untenable. We, you cannot, we cannot, my, my 19 and 20 year old will not be able to purchase their first home for $425,000. Well, Catherine, that is the issue. Young people who are just starting their families are finding it increasingly impossible to buy a starter home. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, it's, it's, uh, I, I'm a millennial, I'm 31, and it's definitely been a topic among my group of friends for, for years now. I own a house, but I'll, you know, admit it that I had help from my parents, you know, that was the key thing for me, being able to own a house as a journalist, you know. Um, and I've also been, I bought my house south of Central in Lake Megory Shores, and I have been one of these homeowners who gets letters like this, uh, trying to buy my house from these private e equity companies. So, um, so it's been, you know, it's been, I, I feel for homeowners having to deal with all this junk mail too. Um, I'm one of them and, and it, it really puts the pressure on and makes you think, you know, should I consider this? But I don't want to add to this, you know, issue either. So, hey, hey, Catherine, you know. this is a nationwide thing that's going on. It's not just in the Tampa Bay area, but all over the country, these mm -hmm. private equity firms are buying up houses. Yeah. yeah, yeah, making it increasingly competitive. Um, in Tampa Bay, we were talking before we went on air that Tampa Bay is still uh, relatively, has a low, lower cost of living relatively to other similar metros, um, still has lower lower housing costs. But I mean, if you live here, it doesn't feel that way. Yeah. Akash, is there a public policy? Uh, is there something that the politicians need to do? Or what's your take on this? So I, I, I'm, I'm a millennial. I'm a little, over, over a little bit. Than, than you, but but Catherine, but uh, I rented for 14 years in South Tampa, and then waited until the pandemic, or waited until a time where I could save, and bought my first house in South Tampa during 2020. And I think the thing, what it's doing for young folks and people that are moving here, it's allowing them the opportunity to rent. The renter market's it's there, and then other developers are going to develop more homes because there's a need for it. So I think. You look at the county commission and local elected officials here, which is controlled by the Republicans here in Hillsborough County, at least, and they're they're seeing developers come and build as many homes as can because there's a demand for it. Mm -hmm. So the problem is we don't like is traffic, but it's good for the community, right? So, I mean, in the sense that this is a problem we didn't have 14 years ago when I moved here. Mm -hmm. So, so what's your take of Congress enacts a law that mm -hmm. says that these private equity firms are no longer able to buy up single-family homes around the country and phase out that ability in 10 years? What's your take on a proposed law like that? I think by then we'll be developed in full. So I mean, I think the 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 the, the, the I don't know if it's going to pass in Congress. I really mm -hmm. don't. I think it's going to be really hard to come to all the city like ours and and change that. Mitch, is there anything going on in Tallahassee that addresses the housing affordability issue? Are you seeing anything like, for instance, the Sadowski Housing Trust Fund, uh, which had been rounded up and used for other purposes over the last 20 years? Is there any move to create more affordable housing 
uh, in this legislative well, session? Well, last year you had the big uh, Live Local Act by uh, that Pasadomo actually was behind. That there's actually talk to folks from Pasco County. I think they have a lot, lot of problems with that. Uh, big major proposal. I would say going to this issue though, Rob, whether it's uh, hedge funds or real estate trust companies, um, it's really the country basically, I would dare say. I mean, I'm renting, I'm here in Tallahassee renting an Airbnb from a property management company that has very little interaction I have with them. They're not a, a human being I can basically talk to immediately. So the fact that these companies buying up all these homes, it does drive up the price, reduces the supply and you know, maybe Akash is right. In the future, this will be great. But right now, it's a problem, and it's it's leading to this affordable housing crisis in Florida and around the country. All right.